going to go through kicking, right? Um, and uh, what you're going to realize in today, the, the kicking that type we're going to do uh, is probably a little bit different and, um, than what you might be used to. Simple. One of the main comments that I make in all of your form always is what? Is what? To fully extend and lock out your kicks, whether it's a punch or it's a kick that you need to lock out. So form is a little bit different in that way. So there's two types of kicks, snapping, snapping, and thrusting. Okay, what you guys are doing, the kicks, is without intent. You're just going, okay, do a kick, right? So do a kick, do a front kick, do a top kick, do a side kick. He has no intention. There is no power, there is no focus. Actually, as you learned yesterday, the vibrating, this snapping punch, this is harder to do than it is to do this. To do, you know, the, this is much easier than actually do an effective, uh, you know, sna snapping, vibrating strike. The kick is the same. Okay, you're gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this. And you're gonna say, that's the same. The snapping kicks is, he needs a pullback. So when I snap, right, when I snap, like I told you that the whip, right, when you snap a whip, the whip, when you snap, you don't. No, it's this pullback that makes the end of that whip accelerate faster than the speed of sound, and that's when you get the cracking of that whip. So as I kick, I have to pull. So kick. So that, see, that is your snapping kick. In order for it to come back fast, what do you have to do? You have to throw it out fast. What's important is, I don't go, uh, I don't fetch my face, I don't give any tell. I don't tell them, I'm gonna kick you now. Right, you gotta just, hands down, everything just, bam. Especially in the chop kick. Right? You're going to move like this. You're going to or shift the weight back or do something. You're going to do something with this other leg. You want to just go from this foot, foot, bam. And nothing else moving with the arms here. Not, don't need to be high. Just boom. Right? If I'm doing front kick, then boom. I'm here. Just kicking. I can be just straight ahead. Hands to whatever. But if I'm going to do chop kick, I'm going to be more standing sideways like this. And I'm talking whatever. Boom. And it's just snapping. Where? Leg height. That's it, just that, boom. Okay, I can kick through, do all this type of movement, but if I want to go, what? Yes, sir. You can show if it feels, you gotta be a tough guy. Did it, yes, sir. Did you feel something? No, sir. No? Yes, you sir. Do it again? No, sir. <laughs> so if I'm just gonna do a quick kick, I'm, just, I'm pushing here, but even when I do that, I need to turn the hip. And what am I doing? Look at my standing foot. So this pivot, see, that is what gives me the power. Even when I do a higher side kick, I don't need to do this. If I go here, it's too late. When I, by the time I pick up, he knows already. You have to, boom. See, you have to push it, just picking up, boom. Right, where is the knee pick up? Do you see my knee pick up? No. Okay, once again, it's the foot. So the foot picking up, and I'm pivoting. And that's where you're making the contact. No. And you kick like this. And this foot's not turned. There is no hip position. He needs to pivot. So he comes across with a, he has to pivot. He can't go fast when I go straight, right? So for form, we do that, right? Form, we have to do our inside form in that way. When we apply it, it's gonna start with a knee bend, it's snapping. So it's gonna come out and it's gonna snap, boom. The next kick then is an outside full moon. An outside full moon is we're gonna stick kick, we'll do it with the lead leg, it's easier. We go boom, and we bring it out. So we turn it outward. Why would I throw a kick up? Drop my foot almost to the ground, and then bring it back up without touching the ground. Why would I do that? If I drop my knee, I do the kick, I drop the foot, 
I need to use than the ground to go ahead and get my power from. Okay? So you guys are not doing it properly. Okay? So what does that mean? Why do we do this? Because we want to throw our high kicks so high. We want to impress. But they're not, they're not, uh, it doesn't impress anybody if they're not usable. For sparring, this, this one in particular is great. Okay? It's great if I first one, I do a reverse. Boom! I do a reverse kick. First. And then I go one, pop, boom! So these two kicks work hand in hand also, right? I can come here in set position, his hands are up, I use one, boom! What did I do with that, my inside boom? Boom, I just snapped it away. Then I go one, I bring it up the same way, and you'll go, and I go one, boom! And I redirect it into a front kick. I can go one here, bomb, and I can go boom, right there, from there. Right, I can stay on this side, one, and come back over, boom. Right, I can go ahead and knock it in, then just do, if you have to be flexible and you're able to do, that crescent, the inside boom, is to knock, and then be able to deliver. Those are what the inside boom are used for, okay? It's not really used for knocking off knocking out guns and knives, but it's a way to clear the hand. You can clear the hand, boom, right? So when I, when I pick it up one, it's one way to clear the hand and come up with the next kick. Right, clear the hand and boom, come up with that next kick. Clear the hand and boom. So we're gonna go one, sit back, one, boom, snap, and then come around one and Direct it to a front kick. Do the same thing. One, clear, then put the foot down. One, and boom, and extend the chop. All right, I can do that. If you're standing here, I can clear one, and go boom, and go with flow, right? As I said, more effective that way, right? If you've got the lead leg there, if it's the other side, it goes the same way. One, and then now I go same thing to the thigh or to the knee. They are now same, I go one, pat, and I go two, and then three, boom. Let's say now for me, I'm gonna go one, pop, and I'm gonna do low kick, pop, and then you're boom. You don't need to do all the fancy stuff, right? I could just decide from here to go one, and then go two. The problem I have is that you kick low, you have very bad form, and it doesn't do any damage, it's just tickling the guy, and now you're in trouble. <clears throat> I hooked it in with a heel. I hook it in. I go low. Boom. To the knee. Boom. Oh, yeah. Where was that? That was to his thigh. And boom. Where was that? To the kidney. And as Huang does, we know, right? And we do this by what is it? What is his upper body going? It's going the opposite direction. What is it doing? It's going like this. So now we hook it. One, boom, and bam. That's where your instep comes into play. Boom. Well, we point the toe, ball of foot. See, ball of foot, boom, right into the We want to hit the head, then boom, with the instep. I can convert this. What, what also this is, let's say I do this and he picks up the leg. Then there you go, bam. I'm going to tap and boom. I can go ahead and just do the instep by faking. What? Whatever. Faking, let's say, a chop. Or faking, coming in the inside full moon. So my foot goes to the outside and then bam. He's going to try to, ah, uh, yeah, there you go. So I go one, bam. We don't need to pick up the knee like this. We can just, see, just pick up the foot and just push. If I, I did the standing side, but if I do a step inside kick, see, I have the opportunity to pick up the knee. Yes. See, so step inside and it's here. If you put a dot on my foot, if I pick up my knee here and then I turn it here, what is it doing? It's going like this. My foot's going one, two, one, two. So what needs to happen is when I go one, when my foot picks up, it has to go straight to the target. 
How do you generate power with the least? You know what I do? That's the goal. I can go like this and go bam. Yes. But I can just go like that too. Like what we're gonna do now a spin kick. Alright? But we're not gonna do a high spin kick. We're just gonna bam. It's just low. Low. Yeah, I don't need to bend down. <laughs> right? I need a little more distance. <coughs> I'm too close. A little distance here. Oh. See, now I'm hitting with the back of the leg. I was being nice. Yeah. I started close, and what's hitting? My thigh, my calf. What kind of teacher, what kind of person, you know, what, what is it that as parents or teachers must you do? Okay? And it's not just about encouragement and telling, you know, praising. But it is about telling truth. But not just telling them, but doing something and taking action to rectify, to remedy. That's what a teacher does. For you to tell somebody, you can't do that, that's no good, and then you don't give any instruction in how to improve and better, then you're not teaching. You're not teaching, you're not parenting. The entire idea that you tell the truth to somebody, you want them to know the truth, is so that you can help them to improve. Many people have the problem of accepting truth. They'd rather hear lies. They'd rather hear praise. They don't want to hear criticism. They don't want to hear the truth that you need to study more, that you got to get on a diet, that you got to get off your ass and train and work out. Okay? That you actually suck and you're not so good. Somebody's got to tell that truth. The problem I see in many of the instructors, many of the students, is what you are doing is you're pleasing your students. You're especially kids and juniors. It is the kids and juniors at the time that you have to teach it. You have to tell them the truth in a loving way and show them how to improve. See, that takes time. That takes time. It takes time. It's better to just say, okay, it's all right, it's all good. Okay? You're doing injustice to the children. I see many of the problems is with the children. It's like there is no care, no thought, no attention to detail. Right? It's not enough to just get by. We have to teach them. The other thing that you have to learn and you have to learn is that you have to teach them how to learn. Teach them how to learn. What is that? Focus. You have to teach them to focus. You don't tell anybody to do anything unless you get eye contact. Whether it's an adult, whether it's a child, you need to make eye contact. You need to affirm and make sure that when you told them something, that they understand what you told them. So right now, I tell you the truth. You guys had a good talk with Tojunim yesterday, right? Tojunim is now a happy, loving uh, grandfather figure. He's like Santa Claus. He's a Harang to Santa Claus. He's a very loving person. You want to be around him all the time, all right? Let me tell you the reality. The reality is that this gentleman that yesterday that you're looking at, such a loving person with all the love flowing out of him, you just want to be next to him all the time, that Santa Claus, he's the person one-handedly after post-World War, post-Korean War, in an impoverished nation, one of the poorest, third poorest country in the world, with thugs running the streets that Dojunim single-handedly with his fist cleaned up the entire neighborhood, built up Harangdo, and created over 68 schools in Korea alone. Almost 30 of them in Seoul. In his 20s. Harangdo, what we have is a product of who and what we are. What our legacy, what Dojunim did, how he was and what he did and the strength and conviction he had is what we are enjoying today. These are days of comfort for us that we don't have to engage in that type of, that type of uh, struggle. 
is a different struggle. Our struggle is a struggle of apathy, carelessness, indignity, self-centeredness, narcissism.